All right, hey guys, we are here with Dan Ninen, who is actually one of my favorite comedians. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Indian. Like, seriously, dude, you are hilarious. Hey, thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much, Anand. Oh, you bet. You bet, man. And, and you know, that uh, being funny as an Indian man is not an easy feat. I mean, uh, for every Russell Peters, Dan Ninen, and Rajiv Satyal, right? You've got like a dozen Arch Barkers, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you like that dig? He's got to be it. listening to this too, right? So. <laughs> it's incredible to see what Arj has done in Australia. A-list star over there. And, you, you know, I mean, I, I, all I will say is it takes a lot of different types. And, and you know, some, some comedy we all uh, we understand. I mean, it's really a matter of personal taste. But he's, he's a very, very successful guy. And you've got some great bits out there. I mean, the Gray's Donut bit is one of my favorites. I actually heard that one a few years ago. And, uh, and, and I mean, does the Japanese side of your ancestry, does your mother being Japanese actually help you to be a little more funny? Because there are a lot of Indian comedians that just fail. They, they, they can't get their groove in, right? I mean, does the Japanese side actually help out a bit? Well, that is actually a true story about my mother. As far as Indians and so on, I mean, you have – the perfect storm. You have an audience of over a billion in India and more spread around the world because of the diaspora, and they all speak English, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. And you also have a culture where Indians really love to laugh at themselves. So, so it's no, uh, no surprise that Indians can be successful. The ones that, that sort of try and crash and burn, I think the problem is that it, it's – the stuff they're doing is just not appealing to the audience. And also, there's a lot of networking and business that goes into the background of this job that, right. uh, I mean, well, not just Indian comedians, but some comedians just fail to understand is really an important part of this job. And I, I think some of them fail at that. Yeah, definitely. Which actually leads me to, you know, I've been, I've been trying to avoid this topic of conversation, but it's been coming a lot for the last month. And that, that's the topic of white privilege. And I know privilege is a bit of a misnomer. I don't like that word either. But, uh, I mean, is white privilege as, as intense in comedy as it is in the rest of Hollywood? Well, the thing with, you know, you would think that. You would think that, that that's the case, but it's actually kind of reversed. I mean, right now, nice. they are desperate for Indian actors. And, and been to these agent events, and they're like, we are desperate for Indian actors, and if you're blonde-haired and blue-eyed, don't even bother. Wow. And I never thought I would, in, in a million years that I would ever hear that. I mean, it, it's incredible. And, and so Indians, I, I did one casting where they said, must be SAG, in other words, Screen Actors Guild, must be union, unless Indian. <laughs> Exception. Wow. <laughs> and that's like... You know, and then I shot, I, I shot 16 days on this movie with Dev Patel and, and uh, Asif Manvi called The Last Airbender for Indian actors to be part of the Fire Nation Army. They would actually give you uh, your SAG eligibility after working just three days. It was amazing. Wow. And, uh, and, and we're not talking about, you know, terrorist B-rolls. We're talking about real, actual roles. Exactly. And, and so, and in the comedy business, you know, if you've been on Letterman or Lino multiple times and you're a quote-unquote white comic, you, you know, you'll make like $25 to do shows at the clubs and 75 on the weekends. And if you're an Indian comic, I mean, you can make $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 because and, and, and there's only a handful of them. But for, you know, the mainstream quote-unquote comics is thousands so 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 we're actually kind of at an advantage for for being brown it's amazing <laughs> wow which i'm sure actually helps a great deal with your parents because you know as we all know uh you know people parents don't really want their asian kids to go into entertainment right if you're not a doctor or engineer you're out i mean uh i mean do you have any advice for brown comics trying to trying to get out there who's i mean aside from showing them the numbers that they're actually making money in the beginning it's really tough because you know, you can't make a lot of money in the beginning. And when I did this movie with M. Night Shyamalan, he said, yeah, you know, I was making movies when I was a kid, but it was understood that I was going to be a doctor. And then when I decided to go into movie making, my parents were so against it. And you start to bring in as much in one would take six months to earn, then your parents are happy and proud. It's an interesting phenomenon. But here's what I would recommend. I, I have young people come up all the time and ask me, hey, I want to be a director, I want to be a dancer, I want to be a musician, or I want to be a comedian. And my parents 
they want me to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, IT, finance, you know, like the typical right. Indian actor. Here's, what, here's the solution. It's real simple. The, the truth is in the middle, okay? What you need to do is you need to go to college. You need to go and get the job that gives you good pay, insurance, and you can do that. And then you can pursue your passion, whatever it is, write your songs, write your scripts, write your jokes, practice your dance moves in the evenings and weekends. And, and, and that's when most show business takes place anyway, right? We're, we're not doing comedy during the work day. We're doing it at night. And I think a lot of people say, well, I don't have time. But the truth is that the average American watches over 32 hours of television a week right. and then get, goes out on the weekends and gets wasted and hung over Saturday and Sunday and stumbles into work Monday. That's, I found you 60 to 70 hours a week of time to work on your craft. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. All you got to do is cut down on the partying a little. Exactly. It's, it's just, you know, I have a poster on my wall from Yamaha Guitars and it, it shows someone about to go on stage and it says, while others partied, you practiced and now it's your turn to play. Wow. Wow, and that's what that show is, business. That's what show business is about. It's awesome. It's so true. Wow, awesome. All right, and then uh, what do you have coming up? That uh, you know, where can we catch you next? Well, a lot of my shows are. You know, I've got a corporate show, and I, I just did New Year's Eve in Dallas. I've got a corporate show in Dallas for Tech Mahindra Saturday, and I'm continuing to tour. I've got another tour of India coming this year. This is the year that I want to get a sitcom and or a reality show together. So I'm doing the groundwork for that. Oh, very nice, very nice. And get it shot in Indiana. They need more work. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And then, and then I'm trying to also open the country's all clean, the first all-clean comedy club where people of any age, above 21, of course, can go and laugh and not be picked on or have to listen to a bunch of dirty jokes. That's my another goal for this year. Awesome. All right, there you have it, guys. That is Dan Ninen giving us the scoop and the update on what's new. Definitely type in Dan Ninen into YouTube. Yeah, the website is uh, comediandan.com, and, uh, or, yeah, YouTube under uh, Dan Ninen, N-A-I-N-A-N, or just... Just look for the world's only Indian Japanese comedian. I'm, I'm the only one, unless my <laughs> sister right. decides to take up comedy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks a million, Dan. Thank you very much. It's an honor, and thanks so much.